When I was 23 years old, I made the most important decision of my life by moving to Canada. After I got my engineering degree, I felt like something was missing and I thought moving abroad might help me figure it out. When September of 2017 rolled around, I jetted off to Vancouver, British Columbia to begin my studies at BCIT. My visit coincided with the beginning of autumn season, as if it were a sign that I too will be going through a transition. For a moment, I really felt like I was the main character in my own movie. Initially, I had planned to spend only a year in Canada, mainly for studies before returning to the Philippines. But fate had other plans. Now, five years later, I'm a permanent resident pursuing my love for video creation while living in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. As a seasoned veteran who has gone through the hoops of immigration and living abroad, I feel it's my duty to share some of the wisdom I've gained over the years. With that, here are five life lessons I've learned since moving to Canada. Whatever I share in this video might or might not be true for you, but I do hope it still helps you in some way. Lesson number one, starting from scratch is hard work. When you uproot your life and move to a new country, you really are starting from zero. Some of the things I struggled with during my adjustment period were confidently speaking in English. Trust me, I didn't sound like this right off the bat. Learning how to commute or navigate to a new city. Mastering the concept of layering or adjusting to each season without getting sick. Living with relatives who I haven't really lived with ever. Being wise with money, especially after finding out the cost of living here, making friends, applying for jobs with an international background, understanding the Canadian jargon and social setting, but more importantly, convincing myself that I don't miss hearing my dad's jokes over dinner, feasting on mom's cooking, and my rowdy sisters bugging me all the time. At first, I didn't pay much attention to these subtle shifts because of the novelty of being in this new setting. But after some time had passed, the truth hit me so hard that I thought, oh shit, what have I done? You see, the concept of ground zero is often viewed negatively because new will always feel different and different can sometimes feel uncomfortable. But remember, that's just part of the growing pains of living abroad. It's tough, but you will get tougher. So to deal with this new kid syndrome, try to see this newness as something exciting that keeps you on your feet. This brings me to lesson number two, patience is key. I wish I could say that I've always been patient throughout the process, but I'd be lying. I was very impatient, almost to the point of a mental breakdown because I wanted things right away and waiting was just not my thing. I think it had something to do with the fact that I studied engineering, where we learn how to get things done efficiently by cutting out the fat or by finding shortcuts to get the job done. As a result, I took a very systematic, linear approach with everything in life. You see, I had a game plan. Step one, finish my program in Canada and graduate with honors. Check. Step two, find a skilled job right away and earn decent money. Eh, check. Step three, meet the requirements for immigration and apply for permanent residency, buy a miracle, check. And finally, step number four, settle my life in Canada and eventually get citizenship. That's still a work in progress. While I did manage to meet most of these requirements by merit or by some stroke of luck, I realized that there is no shortcut in life, especially in immigration. Like reading a book, I couldn't skip any chapters to fully understand the story 
or it's more like coming down with a cold, I had to sit with the shittiness of it all and accept the fact that only time can heal me. Waiting wasn't always a picnic, but I can say with certainty that this ordeal has taught me the importance of trusting the process. This brings us to lesson number three. Life is not a race. When I went through this whole immigration process, I always felt like I needed to rush or move on to the next big thing. A lot of the time, I would measure my progress against that of my family and relatives back home and feel like I was falling behind. Like, oh wow, look at Pauline now. She's a manager at some fancy firm while I'm here mopping floors as a sales associate. Or, OMG, I can't believe Chelsea, who is a year younger than me, is getting married soon. Or that Liz is such a jet setter, I wish I were like her visiting all these beautiful places. And the worst feeling of all, seeing recent Facebook photos of my parents and realizing how old they really are. Where did the time go? Where was I in all of this? What did I miss? For a moment, I felt like I was falling behind and needed to double down in order to catch up. But after a while, I finally came to my senses and realized that life is a journey, not a race. We can't keep beating ourselves up just because we don't have the same timelines. You shouldn't feel pressured to act quickly in order to conform to the standards of others. Different circumstances in life mean that everyone does things at their own pace. So while it may have taken me longer to get here, I'm very pleased with how far I've come and I hope you feel the same way too. All that planning for the future kept me from appreciating the here and now. This taught me lesson number four, which is to enjoy each moment as it comes. People have this misconception that in order to succeed while living in Canada or abroad, one must sacrifice a lot of comforts and rarely give in to their wants and needs. But this way of thinking is far from true. In fact, I wish I had been more selfish with myself. I wish I hadn't let my hectic schedule prevent me from spending time getting to know my peers better. I wish I had traveled more when the opportunity presented itself. And I wish I had spent less time stressing about immigration and more time appreciating the present. In short, stop to smell the roses, indulge yourself in the good times and the bad times because this life is all we have. Finally, I wouldn't appreciate these lessons as much if not for lesson number five, which is to take risks with resilience. When I was in university getting to know my blockmates, we uh, played this game where we had to put an adjective before our names that started with the first letter of our names so that we could remember each other better. You know what I chose? Resilient Rachel. And I'm proud to say that I've lived up to my name. Most of you who have watched my channel probably went here looking for a change. And change can only happen when you take a risk such as living or moving abroad. But what most people don't realize is taking risks necessitates a much higher level of resilience. So find your motivation and figure out why you want to move to Canada. Plan and do your research so you can make well-informed decisions. Realize your goals through consistent effort and focus. In the end, difficulties will arise and you will inevitably go off the grid occasionally Nevertheless, this is where resilience comes in. Resilience. Resilience is the ability to get back on your feet and grow even when bad things happen. Being resilient doesn't mean you'll never feel stress nor pain. Rather, resilience is going through all of that and still doing the damn thing anyway. Finally, I hope you give yourself credit for all that you've achieved, no matter how big or small. Learn from your mistakes, celebrate your wins, and keep moving forward. Believe me when I tell you, you are more powerful and capable than you give yourself credit for. Honestly, I made this video as a way to reflect on my journey. I feel like I haven't really sat with these feelings that I kept pent up over the past five years of living here. So if you've made it this far in the video, thank you for sticking around and hearing me out. I really love sharing insights about immigration and life in Canada, so I hope this channel can serve as your guide as you navigate your journey. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. Thank you again for watching. Be safe and be kind. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.